Hello everybody, Kane here and welcome to another video of Art of Conquest. In this one, we're gonna talk about another guide in a very, very old feature called Gears. So, quite a lot of people um, probably know already what to do in this one, but I also see quite a few people not actually properly managing their equipment or selecting the good stats or a trying to make your archers survive better so we're gonna talk about all of those in just a bit so as you can see i have majority of my gears divine and there is a reason for that because every single gear has at least two good stats and well third stat is so so and i wasn't really able to get even legendary gears which would grant me three so we're gonna talk about that whenever we reach the archers. So I got magic damage reduction, magic damage reduction. On the other one, physical magic damage reduction and some healing received. Then I got physical, physical, some evade chance and another tanky stat. So this is not perfect, but it's about half perfect plus other, say, tanky-ish stats. And the last one, is physical and magic reduction with a little bit of HP and some attack speed. So also like about 50% or, or so useful. In terms of stats, as you can see, the resistances, they get capped. So I think I have like what? Uh, one, two, uh, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight so pretty much i have a uh, 40 percent each and about 5.6 percent get capped so if i would get another one i do believe this value turns to 41.1 or 42.1 so even then from the next like 10 percent it would kind of cap like two or three percent or, or something like that so be aware that over focusing in just one particular resistance is not really that effective um i mean you can but i wouldn't really suggest it and try to keep it as close as possible i mean if if you get like an equipment with three stats that's good you just have like two of each you know you want to try to keep it even to get the most out of the resistances aside from that all of the imbues I have is the tanky ones and I have the max level. I'm not sure if they have any particular uh, uses for any DPS ones. Now for the archers, it's a little bit different. So as you can see, I have three divine ones and I have one legendary. That legendary is literally perfect. Or if I would get one more attack speed, it would be just got tier... Uh, perfect or whatever the thing is um this is as perfect as a legendary can get and this particular piece is better than some of my divine because for example this one uh, i didn't like i opened seven or eight boxes so far and i didn't get anything better than this it's literally just full tanky stats and the only thing i, I got that was the very least good is attack damage crit damage some hp and you know some reductions which i really don't need of these two this is so so and this one is one of the better stats so i i mean my luck is 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 really not that good then i have attack speed also not really that good and then i have attack speed attack speed crit damage and magic damage reduction now this one you could pretty much in the current meta assume that this is a perfect piece right so i have two pretty much or close to perfect pieces i have one pretty goddamn garbage one and then i have uh, another one which is like uh, you know also not good but it has magic damage reduction uh, let's just quickly check do i have another one no i do not so yeah uh, you know, you use what you have, but uh, for some people, I'm pretty sure eventually you're gonna be able to get something like this. At the very least, two stats that are useful, because quite a lot of people are gonna be getting this random BS like here. 
So at least if you have like two crit damages or two attack speeds, you can just literally use that piece of equipment. It's gonna add quite a bit of damage to your Archer Squad or PvE events or PvP. The thing is, do keep in mind that the other two stats might be a little bit on the defensive side. So if you have like reduction to magic damage, that also can be okay-ish because mages do the most damage possible. And at the current, even in the resistance meta, the mages and the necromancers do a ton of damage to the backline. So if you have even for archers and equipment with like two magic resistances or whatever, plus crit damages or attack speed, you could still use that one piece of an equipment. It would still be useful. However, do keep in mind that if you want to go for events and all that kind of stuff, attack speed and crit damage is the better stat. Now, in terms of imbue, there is a thing that you can do to make your archer survive a lot longer. So, there are four imbues in here, three DPS and one tank. So we have Brutality as one of the DPS ones. We have Gale as the second DPS one. And I do believe we have Pulverize as the third DPS one. Now on this piece right here, we have Iron Shield as the tanky, uh, I suppose, imbue. And it's incredibly important for your archers to actually survive. The reason for that uh, is because of this ability. Gain immunity to any individual attack dealing damage over 10% of the troops HP for 8 seconds at the start of the battle. Triggers up to 2 times for the shortest interval of 0.1 seconds. Now if you level this to 45, duration is 12 seconds, trigger limit is 5. Five. So the thing about it is that at the very beginning of the fight, you usually do cast Avril, you jump with Rufio, you try to uh, do as much damage as you're able even in the first 10 seconds to them. And in some cases, at the 10 second mark, pretty much I can almost clean up an entire squad of archers. Like they're dying after invincibilities and after like masks of the abyss i think and all other uh, negates and stuff like that and you can clearly see that the archers don't have this particular ability and if they do this or rather have this particular ability you can pretty much deny four well not four maybe three to five procs of um avril's uh high arcane eight damage through a blizzard or something like that and that can actually mean quite a lot. I mean, people might not understand what that means or how much damage it is. But if your archer squad does indeed survive and actually outtanks that damage, that Avril will have to recast an ability to do that damage on that backline again. Which means likely something else on your field will not need to take that damage as well. Pretty much, Avril's abilities, you know, in at least my own PvP, are very, very crucial. So if uh, I wouldn't kill an archer, I would actually cast another ability to make sure or even try to kill that archer. Because if not, some archers can kill my dragon, some archers can snipe my heroes. So be aware that if you see archers which are usually not taking damage in the very beginning of the battle, this could actually be a reason and personally i would actually use it for most of the ranged army uh in terms of pvp now do keep in mind do keep in mind i have to again post a disclaimer you have to use it on your front line as well as you can see i have a level 51 so i have one already maxed out and the other one, which uh, I got for materials like from events for free or whatever, I managed to level to 46 so far. So you should not remove this from your front line by any means. However, if you do have a second one, this is a way to.
to keep your archers uh, not being completely removed at the very beginning of the battle. And you kind of want that to even them not proc invincibility so early because they're just going to get wiped in the next two seconds. So this is also a trick with a few tips in how to upgrade. Now, you have to upgrade two of your army units, one being frontline to level 50, the other uh, archers to level 50. Now, if you're, say, uh, a Rakan player, you do require a turtle, you want to level the third one to level 50 as well. But you should be careful because this is going to increase your core. Uh, and the other two pieces on the other two heroes should be max level 35. Why 35? is because of this 7-star ability. Improves attack, uh, HP, and healing efficacy for all uh, race army. The rest of the buffs, they don't count since you're not going to be using that army unit. And if you're going to raise these, you're going to raise your core power. Meaning, uh, if you see here, like me, I raise them for a power event so I could win it uh, at one particular moment. I actually raised my core power just to win an event. And I'm not really using this particular core power in PvP or stuff like that. So you should be aware that at the very most, you want to do only three to level 50, uh, rather three sets, uh, and two others should be at 35 unless you uh, don't really care about your core power. So yeah, I suppose that's pretty much it. Pretty simple with one trick how to make your, um, I suppose, uh, range a little bit tankier than uh, I suppose uh, it was before. Now, quite a few people know this trick as I meet them in Dual Tower, but quite a few also don't know this. So it might help you out either now or in the near future. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it helped you out. If you did, do hit that subscribe button. It would help me out as well. Thanks for watching. And if you would wish to support me more than just watching my videos, I have made a Patreon page where you would be able to do just that. And in return, I would be able to help you out more individually in terms of events, PvP formations, and stuff like that. As well as I would like to thank all of my patrons for the support. I really, really appreciate it for your subscriptions. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe out there.